evening. What's the evening? Yeah, oh, there he is. Got up late. All right, so first up, we're going to have uh, Chief Brandon Skaggs kind of take you through how this all started, what happened, and where we are as of today as far as calls and runs. And then we'll bring up Town Manager Kevin Beatty that can speak to what we're going to be, the steps we're going to be taking going forward, okay? So first, I'll bring up Chief Brandon Skaggs. Good afternoon. On December 24th at around 3.01 a.m., the Clarksville Fire Department was dispatched to an EMS call on the south end of Clarksville. This dispatch included that we had two subjects complaining of chest pain. The department responded as to our normal protocol and provided basic life support. Around 4.45 a.m., the Clarksville Fire Department received a second complaint of a gas leak in the same district. Shortly after that, we had had an influx of calls and it depleted our resources very quickly and had to call in additional firefighters to um, able to handle the responses. I then had Central Alarm contact the utility company for an update. Um, during this time, I also contacted Clark Memorial ER to get an update on the patient that we had uh, transported and was notified that the patient had had high levels of CO and was transferred to another facility for appropriate treatment. My command team then established uh, communication with Clark County EMA and Central Alarm and was able to establish a command center located here at the Clarksville Fire Department. Uh, the reasoning in doing so, if, um, we had an influx of calls. We had several, almost two dozen calls in a short period of time. So we knew that something was going on, we just didn't know what and why. Members from several agencies, including the local school system, created a plan to provide emergency notification to check on loved ones, neighbors, and friends. We also created a plan for emergency care and shelter if needed. During this first operational period, we responded to 50 initial gas and carbon monoxide calls. This number doesn't reflect call-ins to the station by personal cell phone or landline, or walk-in complaints, which we received numerous. We also received complaints while we were on some of these scenes that, hey, my house down the street is having an issue. My neighbor's complaining of an issue. We also responded to those as well. The Clarksville Fire Department's goal was to make the environment safe and to evacuate people to safe and warm areas. Unfortunately, this forced us to shut down the gas utility to most of these homes and or businesses. We did have one business um, located in the Eastern Boulevard corridor that was a healthcare facility that had to be shut down um, and 50 patients had to be rescheduled or relocated to different um, agencies to provide care for them. We are estimating that we have made around 100 calls since that time. I will, I will let you know that the calls have, have decreased, um, but we are still um, trying, we're still responding to some. Um, and still trying to recover from the initial incidents that we had. Um, I'll open, open up for, for questions. I'm sure most of you may receive phone calls from, from residents or businesses. So if you'd like to um, just ask one at a time. How much overtime has the crews been putting in here with the fire department, those types of things that taxpayers might have to pay for? Uh, so you're looking at about nine, nine firefighters initially um, that responded to the scenes, and we're probably about 24 hours of overtime for those, those firefighters. Um, not including my command staff, which is uh, my deputy chiefs, myself, um, and also other town officials that have been helping us, communications director, manager town Beatty. So um, pretty much since Christmas Eve at 301, we've either been on call, on duty, taking phone calls, responding, um, and my cell phone is, is going crazy. Uh, un unfortunately, I don't have an update on that, and it's uh, it's difficult to get those updates after they leave our care. Um, the uh, the communication that I did receive was through another agency, another public safety agency, and that really helped us kind of figure out, hey, if we have high levels of CO, you know, in this patient, um, it, it made sense in the area that we were receiving these calls. So. Um, right now, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the actual cause. Um, I, I will say that, you know, the homes that we responded to and the businesses we responded to, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't widespread throughout the town. 
Um, we did have members, uh, we did have a member from the, um, the gas utility in the command center, um, but we, we still didn't get any clear answers on, on what was going on. So we, we are trying to figure out and determine um, because we, at this point we want to recover but be proactive for our, our residents. My initial, my initial fear was if we're receiving these types of CO calls in some of these homes which were in fatal levels of parts per million of CO, what about the patients, I mean, what about the residents that don't have CO detectors? That's why communications director helped me get a, a mass notification out. Check on your friends, neighbors, family, because we simply don't have enough firefighters to go door to door and respond to the calls that were coming in. We needed the public's help on this. What's been the common threat? I'm sorry? What's been the common threat? I mean, are they all... <clears throat> The, the most of the homes that we went to, if not all the homes we went to, were gas-related customers. But you can't, you can't lay the blame on I don't, the gas yet. I don't have, any, I don't have a, a cause or a proof or, or anything like that. So I think that would be premature of me to, to say that about a, a utility company at this point. Have you been in contact with the utility company? Have they been responsive? I know that we reached out to them. We haven't heard back from them. Have they been working along with you all with this issue? I have been in contact as uh, up to uh, as recent as 10 a.m. this morning to let them know that we had the press conference scheduled. They were more than welcome to attend, um, and he said that he would try to get someone here. Um, they did provide a representative in the command center to try to um, you know figure out if if there was a, a solution to to the, the calls, um, and and they were busy also. Um, so you know any call that we went to, uh, we requested the the gas company to respond behind us. You know, because unfortunately we had to shut the gas off to these to these homes and businesses. Any areas hit hardest? I know you said it, it wasn't widespread, so. Yeah, so the south end of Clarksville, you're looking mainly um, Eastern Boulevard. We had a few along that corridor, but um, Harrison Avenue, that was that area was hit very hard. Um, Kenwood, Harrison Avenue, uh, Fairbanks, um, some in the Green Acres neighborhood around the elementary schools. Uh, we had, that's where we had most of our calls. We didn't see a lot of calls in the Parkwood neighborhood. We didn't see a lot of calls in Blackson Heights. Um, we did have some here and there. Uh, mainly what we received in those areas was malfunctioning um, appliances after we responded. Are those the addresses behind you? That was the initial, those were the initial addresses that we responded to. You can see the timeline there. The calls were coming in very, very quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, we have three, we have three fire units on duty in Clarksville. Um, and we've never had this amount of influx since uh, Hurricane Ike. The people whose gas had to be turned off, what are they doing now? How are they being housed? Uh, they, they have chosen to, to house themselves or stay with loved ones. We did have Clarksville Middle School set up as an emergency shelter with food, water, bathroom. Because um, that was my fear also, you know, we're, we're shutting these utilities off uh, for these, these residents because we have to make it safe. Um, but then what are we going to do with them? You know, our, our care doesn't stop there. Um, that was my fear is we're going to have, you know, several hundred customers of ours, our residents, during a holiday time frame, uh, cold and, and hungry. And uh, teen, Dr. Tina Bennett really stepped up and got that in play for us. Clarksville Police was going to be in charge of that if we needed. Um, but fortunately, most, I think most people sheltered in place and they, they just braved through the storm. Um, no, you know, that at first I was wondering when we got so many alarms coming in, you know, I wondered what really uh, was we dealing with? Was we dealing with a power issue? Was it a, you know, a busted pipe issue? Um, but no, we, we seen most of the cause was related to gas related customers. Um, and I, I don't know of, of very many uh, Duke energy calls or power related calls that we responded to. We did have some um, response with Indiana American Water, uh, but that was that's not un uncommon when you get temperatures down to have busted pipes, sprinkler systems of that nature and stuff like that going down. And then working with the energy company, I know you said there was a rep here, they, they weren't able to determine the cause or just didn't elaborate? Uh, it, it could be both. Um, but we, we left, unfortunately, that we, when we shut down the command center, we still did not have a, a good answer on what was, what was causing this influx of calls. I, 
I, I don't, you know, I, I don't have, I don't have accurate information enough to, to put that out there. Um, I would definitely defer that to Centerpoint um, to see maybe if they have some better information on that. You said that you're still responding to some calls now. At this point, what is taking place? So, so what's happening really is, um, you know, the, the initial CO and gas smell calls have, have decreased significantly. Um, but now you have that public fear. Um, people are, um, you know, haven't been home in a couple of days. Can you come by and check and see if I have CO? Um, we had reports that flames on um, gas stoves, gas logs, boilers were, were very erratic, out of control looking. Um, so, we, you know, we're getting complaints like that. Um, those have subsided. But now it's, it's more or less, re, you know, recovering and letting our customers, our residents know, hey, we'll come out and check, you know, and we, we want to make sure you feel safe in your home here in Clarksville. Have you been working with New Albany Fire at all? I've seen that, you know, when you're down there in South Clarksville, New Albany's right there. New Albany residents have reached out to me. Have you been working alongside with them? Yes. Like yes, I have. Uh, actually, Chief Cron with the New Albany Fire Department, he's one of their deputy chiefs. He actually uh, took a position in our command center. Um, they were dealing with an influx of calls also. And if you looked at the map data that we were able to um, get from Central Alarm on our CAD, uh, the line uh, kind of followed, you know, the, it was progressive in the same first district of New Albany and the first district of, of Clarksville. So, you know, we were all working together because when it, you know, Clark County EMA was able to bring us all together here. And um, that's very important when you have uh, almost a local disaster here with, with this type of, of calls. I know some people were talking about CO detectors. In the future, is that something that you all might give out to residents or? At this point, we don't have any, uh, any time to actually um, donate or give out CO detectors. Um, I think it'd be a great initiative for maybe energy companies and home builders associations, whoever, whoever can be involved in, in getting that proactive movement out there. Um, but you know, we, we do smoke detectors at, at the fire department and that's based on donations. Um, Unfortunately, we're not able to, pr to provide those out of our, our uh, taxing budget, but um, I, I think it's a great, I think it's a great uh, initiative that could be started. Um, and I would like the, the residents and, and customers to know, you know, make sure that if you don't have one and you have gas utilities, you, you should have had one already before this incident, but this even, even furthers, you know, justification to have one. Um, and then also uh, make sure that, you know, you have someone checking the maintenance of your, of your appliances and things like that. Yeah, so, you know, um, and, and after our initial uh, statement, I did get reports um, that there was a, an influx of purchased CO detectors at our local hardware stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, they all, they all ran out, which I'm glad to see. I hate that the customers had to, had to front that out of their pocket, but I'm glad they took, they took our advice and, and was trying to protect themselves because, you know, CO uh, for us, uh, it's, it's been labeled as a silent killer, you know, and um, there have been those those uh, horror stories that you know fa entire families don't wake up. That was my fear as a fire chief, and that's in my that's in my neighborhood, and I know these people, and uh, so I, I was very passionate about it, and uh, you know um, it's uh, it was a it was a big fear, and I'm glad that um, that we were able to uh, provide our response, and we we did take care of our residents, but it it was it was tough, it was, and uh, it wasn't. You know, it was simply, we'd go to the house, we'd determine, okay, you either have a gas smell or you have CO at a, an, an unsafe level. Look, we're gonna have to evacuate you, get you in a warm car or get you to the shelter, but we have to turn off your utility. And that's a tough call to turn someone's utility off on Christmas Eve. Where should people put their detectors? Next to the furnace, uh, bedroom? Yeah, so there's, there's different, man, uh, follow, the, the best thing to do is follow manufacturer recommendations that's included with that type of detector. Um, some of the detectors are combination detectors, so you can get smoke and CO, um, or you can get straight CO. There's some that are battery operated. Uh, there are some that are operated on um, electrical supply that you plug in. I would recommend battery operated, and you may be able to get a combination detector with a 10-year lithium battery, and that way, you know, you're, you're set for 10 years. There is an expiration date on a lot of those detectors, but I would definitely follow the manufacturer's recommendation on that. Your best guess was how many calls? I know it's hard because you don't yeah. know. Best, best estimate. Best estimate um, as of today, probably around 100 calls. But that first operational period, we were looking around 50 initial calls. 
that so that doesn't include we're gonna have to go back you know we went to some residents two and three times um, and with some of those residents we transported many uh, patients out of the same house that would have been on Christmas Eve Um, we know that uh, the last confirmed we had was four patients were transported, um, three out of one house and one out of another home, but um, they did have walk-ins. I was keeping in contact with Clark Memorial Hospital, and they were um, set on diversion, so they were having to set or transfer people out, but they did have people walking in. Uh, there was Louisville, I think Louisville area hospitals also, we got communication from that they were receiving some patients that were walking in. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, now as to where we go from here, we're going to bring up uh, Town Manager Kevin Beatty with some new information we got today. The last name is, or Kevin is traditional spelling, Beatty is B-A-I-T-Y. Kevin. Thanks, Chief Skaggs, for that uh, lot of information. I uh, want to thank you, your command staff, as well as the fire department and all the crews for responding the way they did. Um, in Planning for uh, today's press conference, uh, talking with uh, Communications Director um, Conklin and Chief Skaggs, immediately uh, received a phone call from Representative Rita Fleming. She advised me that she and Representative Ed Clare have been in communication with the Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission, and they will be initiating an investigation uh, into the matter. Um, the, the community, uh, Clarksville, uh, elected officials, we do not have the authority to initiate that investigation. That has to come through the regulatory commission. And uh, Representative Ed Clare, obviously represented from Floyd County, representing New Albany, Representative Fleming, representing Clarksville and Clark County. Uh, they have teamed up, and uh, the Indiana, Regu Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission will be conducting an investigation. I don't have a timeline as to when that will begin when and how that will occur, but was advised this morning that it is ongoing. And uh, we had asked uh, Representative Fleming if she wanted to attend, and she said that she had confidence that we could present the information to you. Sure. At this point, I don't know when uh, the communication was made to the regulatory commission. Uh, obviously, they have been closed over the weekend for the most part, except for emergency callouts. So I would imagine uh, they will be in uh, communication with Centerpoint Gas, uh, trying to find out from them their logs, all the data that they have to provide, and then they will launch their investigation based upon what they find. Sure. Well, you got to understand it is a holiday weekend, so the majority of the people who would be the ones to make the decisions probably aren't in the office. I'm not trying to make an excuse for them, but you have to understand they have a chain of command that they have to work up. Um, initial reports were coming in uh, to uh, Chief Skaggs from some of the field crews, and then all of a sudden that communication dropped off. To me, that indicates that there has been a report from farther up stop communications we need to get a handle on what's going on so we can get a press release out that identifies what our concerns are and i would say at this point that's what they're attempting to do i i would say at this point that they really need to come forward and they need to uh present some information that would assuage concerns for the citizens uh they can do it you know just like we have uh, as was stated, we invited them to come here. We hoped that they would be here. Unfortunately, they have not. Um, but it would be nice for them to, to come forward, present the information they have, at, at least say, here's what we know, here's what we don't know, and we're trying to find out what the problems are. Are there any future concerns? I mean, a lot of people have center point gas. Is this the only line in Clarksville that has it, or does it have it further up here from residents? Should they be turning their gas off too, just in case? Um, those types of things. I know since we haven't really heard from Centerpoint, I think mean, people are concerned. Sure. One thing to keep in mind, they're very much like the electrical system. They have grids um, and they have districts for which uh, gas is dispersed and they can cut off blocks, they can cut off whole sections. 
Uh, I don't know where and what was the main impetus uh, or the area where the, the concern was raised. Obviously, it was cross municipal boundaries, as you've, as you've already heard. Um, but there has to be some indication from them as to why and how that occurred just within those areas. And I would hope that they would come forward with that information. I think they'd be obligated to tell people what was going on, you know, especially because people could die. Yes, there, not only is there a, an emotional you know, point that needs to be presented, but there is an ethical issue that needs to be uh, presented as well because the, the public not knowing only gives the public the opportunity to present non, non, um, uh, drop the word. Uh, the, the public not knowing only gives the opportunity for the public to make uneducated decisions and those uneducated decisions could lead to uh, disaster. Thank you all. Thank you.